Hello, everybody. My name is Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. We want you to share us everywhere all over your platforms. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that a lot of people don't talk about, hospice care. What is it? Who is it for? And why are we so afraid of it? There are some places where hospice is something that's celebrated, but in other cultures, it is something to be feared and put away at all costs. Today, we're gonna to talk to two, not just one, but two experts in hospice care, and they are the ladies of Majestic Hospice Care and I'm excited for you all to meet them. Y'all, please say hello to Katura and to Shonda. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm excited about this conversation and a little nervous, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you. We, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Okay. And it's the stereo for me, y'all. I love it. All right. So <laughs> let, first of all, let's jump right in. I want to know where are you all located and how did y'all get started in hospice? Well, that's a question we've had before, yes. but we're located here um, in the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia, yes. um, in Tucker. Our office is located in Tucker, Georgia, probably about 20 minutes or so outside of the city. Yes. Okay. Um, and so I guess the, the great question is, how did we get here? So we are two nurse practitioners, um, and we've worked in the ICU for collaboratively over 20 years together. And so my grandmother passed away in 2017 and Katura's mom passed away in 2017. And it really, um, we both use hospice and it really hit home that there were some missing pieces in hospice that we felt like we could really accomplish and really kind of help with the idea and the education of what hospice really is. Right. I think and that is so great. Just in what you just said, Shonda, because it is the loss that you all saw a need Yes. And decided that you all could fill it. Yes. yes. I know that you said it was your mom. Is that correct? That passed away in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what in that as both of you all being nurse practitioners, yes. how did you look at that? You all had been around this for a while, yes. years, 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. Why was it that thing that made you think I need to change the system? You know, I really don't know <laughs> um, because it was never, you know, hospice was never the goal, um, but being put in the situation, you know, not being able to be the daughter, but being the nurse practitioner, you know, in that instance, you know, with my mom and my family and seeing some of the things that could be changed and like the education um, that pa uh, patients and pa uh, families receive it yeah. to me, it just was not up to par. And so I wanted to, I wanted more more for my dad, you know, more mm -hmm. education for him, how to use medications, what is the expectation, you know, for families and for the caregiver and how huge of a, a burden it can be, you know, mm -hmm. to the family and people don't always understand that and burden is not really a bad word. Mm -hmm. Um but it's a huge responsibility yeah. and it can feel like a burden, you know, um, but people, I think if they understand what they're getting into and they Absolutely. have the education mm -hmm. and uh, hospice is really talking and, you know, letting them know what to expect, I think the process will go a little smoother. Absolutely. I love that. You, I checked, of course, your website as I do everything else. First of all, <laughs> your website is beautifully done. Thank it, is, you. it is so easy to read and it's so informative. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is on your website is that hospice is a philosophy it, yes. of care. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yes. So, so yeah. So when we talk about philosophy of care, we, we really want to encompass compassion. We want to encompass quality. So it's a philosophy of how we do things. We don't want to read it as just like Couture said, burden or something that's death associated, but we want to really change the trajectory of how people see hospice and really focus on like care, like yeah. care. As simple as that sounds, we just want to focus on quality care for every single patient every single time. So that's our philosophy. And comfort. And comfort. comfort. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought that was so interesting because, you, you know, you have comfort and care as a philosophy, because a lot of us know hospice as 
the place you go to die. Yes, right, mm-hmm. right. And that is what a lot of a lot of people feel that way. And yeah. a lot of people will say, you know, they're just going to morphine them to death yeah. or they're going to hasten death. Yeah. Well, that's not the goal. Mm-hmm. The yeah. goal when patients are hurting, mm-hmm. as most of them are, is to comfort them. Absolutely. It's to make sure that we manage their symptoms. Mm-hmm. It's to make sure that they are feeling as good as they can in those times. Yeah. And that may mean sleeping. Yes. you know, because they've been hurting. And so they need the rest, yeah. you know? And so that's what we do. That really is. We <laughs> consider ourselves more so vessels. We're not trying to hasten, but we're vessels for making sure that these patients get those last final, whatever it is that they want. And most of that is just comfort and just kind of the realization that transition is about to happen. Mm-hmm. So in that, we want to make sure that the family understands, the patient understands, mm-hmm. and that we're all on the same page. And that as graceful as birth can be, death can be just as graceful. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so we don't want to, yeah, we want to make sure that they have that. And, you know, yeah. families, at least when they think about death at the end of the day or transition at the end of the day, they, it comes with a little bit of like sigh. Like, like peace. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Mm-hmm. On our show, we've talked to a lot of caregivers. Mm-hmm. And, yes. and that has been one of the consensus thoughts is that during the time of transition, not that they did not love their, their person or will miss them desperately, but it's almost that sigh of relief because they're not mm-hmm. hurt anymore. Exactly. They're not, their quality of life is now, you know, and, and so it's interesting yeah. to hear you all say that. Now, mm-hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that you said is that it's not just for the patient, it's for the family as yeah. well. Right. I, Absolutely. you know, I, I, I look back cause my mom passed away a while ago and she was on hospice and mm-hmm. the ladies and gentlemen that were at our house d- during the hospice care, they were phenomenal. They really yeah. did help all of us. They kept my mom yeah. calm, but they kept <laughs> My dad up to date, they kept all of us as the kids, you know, letting us know what was going on. They were so incredibly pleasant. How is it? It's not just for the patient, but for the family as well. Mm -hmm. Because the the family goes through a lot. The family is dealing with grief, Mm -hmm. you know, and and in some situations, you know, they've been dealing with it uh, for a very short time. Right. Maybe the, the this illness, like with my mom, it was only six months you know? Um, And so that was a very short time for us. And Mm -hmm. so dealing with the grief process in that very short time, it it would be great if you can have people who who, who you can talk to, who understand that, you know, this, this just happened, you know? So we really have to be mindful and have that compassion, you know, and talking to people and helping them understand what this process looks like. Because I think when we have education, that takes a lot of the, a lot of the, um, what is it? Um, the, the, the fear, yeah. I think, and the fear, I think yeah. fear, it takes a lot of the yeah. fear away yeah. when you know what to expect exactly. because you've been educated. Yes. And I think that that's a huge part. Yeah. yeah education, I think is always key. So is, Shonda, yeah. let me ask you, wh- I, I don't even know how to ask the question properly, but where do your patients come from? Are they from the hospitals? Does the family call you? Does a nursing facility call you? Where where does that happen at? Actually, everything you named and a little bit more, that's where our patients are coming from. So we've gotten patients from hospitals, the assisted livings. We've have even had families look us up and say, hey, we were looking for a hospice and we came across, like mm-hmm. you said, our website and they give us a call that way. There's mm-hmm. so many different ways to get in touch with us. Mm-hmm. And we welcome anyone that even has a question about hospice. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, let's see if we can answer it. Would it be a good fit? So um, there's so many different ways to get in touch with us. We accept them from different capacities. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we will take patients from um, most sources for sure. Mm-hmm. And that's so good to know. But when you're talking about hospice, and like we said earlier, a lot of folks have no idea what it is. What's the difference between hospice and palliative care, or are they the same thing? So they're they're definitely different, different yes. right? Um, hospice is for patients that uh, have a diagnosis, and they only have about six months. So if the disease progresses at its natural, you know, rate of progression, mm-hmm. you have about six months or less. Um, to live. Um, But with palliative, palliative is uh, people are not really on trajectory with their chronic illnesses. Okay. And so maybe, and I'll use my experience with heart failure. 
Mm -hmm. um, I take care of heart failure patients as well. And so um, they're just simply not doing well with medications. Um, they might have to be on a medication, you know, for the rest of their life, right, um, to just help their heart. But they're not at the point of just having six months or less, right? So, but they still need follow-up. They still need that intermediary yes. provider, you know, to just help them out, help them with medications yes. and different things so that they don't um, get hospitalized. It's okay. an interdisciplinary approach yes. is what we say with palliative care. Mm -hmm. We like to use their primary care physician to make communication with them or just anyone in their group. So we kind of take the approach of patient-centered care mm -hmm. while providing the best care for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's our approach to palliative mm -hmm. care. Yeah. So interesting because that's something that I didn't know the yeah. difference was yeah. of a yeah. thing. So do you all take care of children as well as adults or is it in particular, we only do adults? How does that work? So we only take we care of adults. adults. Yeah. <laughs> our license is for adults. And yes. so okay. it's probably our calling for yes. adults. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's a call because yeah. I, it, it is a calling to be it is in hospice. I, yeah. I, me personally, uh, the weeping would never end, would never mm -hmm. stop. I, did, how, how affected are you all sometimes in some of these situations? Oh, I mean, because we're human, we really do get affected by some of the, the deaths or the transitions. And we get really close with the family. Get attached to it. We yes. do get attached to it. But just as we said before, the peace that it provides them, mm -hmm. it also provides us the same mm -hmm. amount of peace. Mm -hmm. And the stories that we have and the things that we remember about different patients, mm -hmm. it's enough for us to keep going on mm -hmm. and knowing that what we're doing is making an absolute difference in so many people's lives that we just want to keep going on in the right. name of all the patients that we've taken care right. of before. Right. So it's so inspirational for us to keep doing this, mm -hmm. but definitely we are human. And right. so we feel it too, for right. sure. Right. Yes. Just like I said, for me, the weeping would never end, ever, <laughs> ever end. So, yeah. I mean, I appreciate that the work is that someone's out there doing this incredibly important work. What would you all say to someone who is, you know, well, we don't need hospice there. Those people are just whatever, fill in the blank. How mm -hmm. do you all approach someone who needs hospice, who has been told your, your loved one is going to their um how do you all go in and start dealing with the families there? Very well, I'll question. tell you, that's yeah, a great question. That's a great question. The, the, the patient is not usually the one that has that issue, right? Okay. It's normally the family that has that issue, mm -hmm. right? And I think we really just have to um, do a deep dive into why they feel the way they do about hospice. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to start breaking down that stigma mm -hmm. um, of hospice and what they really, because, you know, people hear a lot of things about what hospice is mm -hmm. because they, and they simply just don't know, yeah. right? Um, so just really helping them to understand um, what hospice is and what they can expect for their uh, loved ones mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to let and really help people understand that it's not about them yeah you know Absolutely. it's about that patient that's lying in the bed yeah. right what is it that they need yeah not mm -hmm. what we need what do right. they yeah. to be more comfortable. So that I think once so we get ourselves out, yes. Yeah. And ask the families, like you said, to take themselves out of it, like yes. comfort. And to realize that hospice is quite beneficial. We Absolutely. follow you afterwards for about 13 months to make sure that the, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. we, we And we take pride in making mm -hmm. sure that we're not only like, it's not transition and that's it. Mm -hmm. We're like transition. Hey, how are you doing the first month afterwards? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? We take pride in while the patient is still alive, providing the resources that these people mm -hmm. need the benefits are there mm -hmm. and if we can capitalize on educating about the benefits mm -hmm. we would really move forward as like a a, a person or a people that uses hospice more mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's so beneficial Absolutely. we love it and we want to embrace and try to let the families know right. to use utilize those benefits right because the alternative to hospice especially if you're in the hospital is cpr yeah. You know, is it an undignified death? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the alternative. And so trying to help people see that right now, you guys have a choice. Yeah. And, you know, choosing the dignified way, yes. you know, choosing that way of comfort um, and not, you know, the alternative, really. That, you know, that is so absolutely. interesting. So that being said, and this may be a little difficult, 
because all hospice organizations are not created equal. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if, <laughs> yes. yeah, right. Yeah. So if yeah. someone needed to find a hospice organization or a, what is what are a couple of tips that you could give to someone that they need to look for or look out for? I will say do some of your research. Um, I will, a lot of people, when they're looking for hospice, they get direction from someone in the hospital who gives them just a regular list of patients, a regular list of hospices. Do your research outside of what people give you. Right. And even if they give you a list, like go with, dive into like who that company is, what their motto is, what their vision is, and why they love what they do and not just getting patients. So I will say, do some of the research and really kind of like you do with everything else, interview these companies and see if they're a good fit. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, leave that out. You're making a big decision for your family member or your loved one or even yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think doing the research is big mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, that's huge. Um, you said, uh, do your research, interview these folks. Okay, we've all been to a job interview. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get the job, sometimes you don't. Absolutely. What kind of questions should you ask in the interview process of, of looking up a facility or looking up a, an agency? How often are you going to come out? Yes. You know, how mm -hmm. often are you going to come and see my loved one? Yeah. You know, what can I expect with that, with Absolutely. your visits, right? Mm -hmm. Who's coming, mm -hmm. you know? Am I going to be informed, you know, before? If I should have an emergency, who should I call yes. and when, mm -hmm. you know? You have to have those questions. You have to hold people feet, you know, hold their feet to the fire sometimes mm -hmm. because you really need to know. And I mean, if they can answer your questions, if you feel comfortable, then they may be a fit, Absolutely. you know, but then there are also sometimes too, they might pass, you know, the test at first yeah. and then you get in and, you know, um, they're not in the dialogue and the comfort level, you know, in the yeah. room hasn't been built, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you have to switch. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, just ask questions. Ask. Yes. You want to ask questions. Yep. So good. Y'all, th there's so many more questions to ask and so much more information to get. If someone wanted to reach out and, and touch base or continue the conversation, where could they find you? So it's easy. You can just go to majestichospice.com. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in the Atlanta area, you can uh, call 1-800-HOSPICE. We make it easy for you. There. That is super easy. Yes. Don't worry, y'all. If y'all didn't get that information, <laughs> all of that is going to be in the description below. Ladies, before I let you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 This game is fun. This is the first time I'm going to be doing it with two people on the screen. Okay. So y'all are going to have to figure this out. So it's an okay. individual game. The game is called This or That. And okay. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things, depending on the question. And you just tell me which one you like the best. Okay. Are you all ready to play? We're yes. ready. All right, here we go. Coffee or tea? It's going to be coffee for me. And it's going <laughs> to be her. <laughs> okay. So there's a split. Michael yeah. Jackson or Prince? Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Oh, I love it. I, in unison. <laughs> okay. Work from home or go into the office? Go into the office. Oh, yeah, we go into the office. Yeah. Peanut butter, smooth or crunchy? Smooth. smooth. <laughs> Reality TV, yes, please, or I'd rather not. Probably yeah, rather not. I'd rather not, yeah. That's not a fan. Okay. <laughs> water park or amusement park? Water. Amusement park. I'm going water. <laughs> That's like funny. Okay. Flat back or bite your tongue? Ooh. Ooh. This is the clapper. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the biter. <laughs> So y'all are y'all are perfectly matched together. Are, I love yeah. it. So one's gonna clap back and one's gonna hold your tongue. Yeah. I like that. Okay, that is so funny. All right, do it yourself or hire a professional. Hire, hire a professional, <laughs> always. <laughs> Large crowds or small groups? Small groups. Yeah, I like the small. Slow dance or shake that thing. I'm going slow. <laughs> Yeah, slow. I can't slow. dance. 
But Katara, at least you know you can't dance, girl. And you're right. not trying to get it. I'm, I'm, right. I'm okay with that. <laughs> and finally, what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? Oh, my. God. I would say keep going. Go for it. I, at 13, I was pretty dog. I would say smart at 13. I would just say keep going. You got this, girl. Like, mm-hmm. really, you got this. I love yes. it. Katara? Patience. It's going to all come in due time. Just be patient. (laughs) Just be patient. Yeah. Love it. Ladies, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. It has been a pleasure to meet you both. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. having us. Yeah. And don't forget, everybody, while you're here, subscribe, like, share us with everybody on your platform. That's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents.